Hello friends, Kendra here. So now I'm going to be doing the second part of my April wrap up. I decided to split these in two videos because it just seemed <laughs> fitting. Um, so like we talked about in Sam's wrap up, I finished The Goblet of Fire. I'm taking a break from reading more because this was, you know, I read the first four in quick succession, which is, you know, a lot of hours. So I'm gonna take a break before the longest Harry Potter book, which is The Order of the Phoenix and my least favorite. Uh, and then after I finish that and Sam finishes that, we'll do that video. But hopefully that means that we can, you know, redo, <laughs> redo some stuff. Um, so I read some other books as well to wrap up April. I actually spent a lot of time reading To the Mirror and the Light, but I didn't finish it until May. So we'll talk about that next time. But I did finish uh, another discussion book for uh, API Heritage Month, and this is Minor Feelings, an Asian American Reckoning by Kathy Park Hong. Tons of tabs. It's really, really good. And my only thing is that I wanted more of this. And it took me a while to figure out that she was taking parts of her own life and kind of expanding them and commenting on them in a cultural way on um, different parts of being Asian American and what that's like for her as an artist. She looks at the woman as artist. So many things. So if you would like to hear more about this book, the discussion episode goes up next week, the third Wednesday in May in 2020. So you can go check that out. We talk about this for a very long time. I think like 30 minutes. I don't know how I'm going to edit that down to a more reasonable length, but um, we really love this book, Sashi and I did, and I really enjoyed seeing a lot of our Asian American, um, and uh, I really enjoyed seeing a lot of our Asian and Asian American contributors uh, read this book and have their reviews up on Instagram as well. There's so many own voices reviews for this book, which is great as well. So I paired this with Maxine Hong Kingston's The Woman Warrior, and it's very interesting to read these two close together. So I would recommend doing that if you're interested. So yeah, that's this one. Um, I also read uh, Queenie by Candace Carty Williams. Now this was really interesting um, because I had seen other reviews for this book, it was very popular, so I actually avoided it while it was really popular. And then I actually buddy read this book with my friend Laura, who is originally from Haiti. And so we uh, discussed this book and it was really great to be able to discuss the book with someone from the Caribbean um, and get that um, perspective. Now. Queenie is uh, of Jamaican descent, and so there is that difference there. But I think one of the big things that people have talked about with this book is how Queenie has her own internalized kind of prejudice and racism going on, and how she has had a very traumatic past with some things that have happened to her, and that's a big part of the book. So I don't want to give any spoilers, but she eventually goes to therapy uh, to work out these things. And one of them is her own internalized racism towards uh, particularly black men. And that's something that she has talked to her therapist about and there's reasons for that. And so we talked a lot about this and how, you know, this is a real thing that happens and she is going to talk to someone about it and getting the help that she needs because that is based in some trauma that she experienced. So I think it's really important to remember when we're reading books that just because a character uh, is racist or has uh, some internalized ideas about themselves, um, that doesn't mean that the author is racist or has these shares these ideas. The her characters are separate from the author, and I found some discussions about this book that don't separate uh, the author with her main character, but they are very two different people. And I think it's really important that women like Queenie, who have experienced this kind of trauma, are able to see themselves in books, but also see their own imperfections and the things that they need to work on in books as well. So I think that's been a very interesting discussion. Um, as always, I would recommend going and checking out um, some particularly uh, Jamaican British people to see what their perspective is on it, also from a literary criticism side to go check out some reviews if you're interested. But I think this is a very important conversation because of the way that Queenie's trauma, um, the way she deals with that manifests itself is something that, you know, 
more people want to be able to see in books and see themselves in that way. So anyway, this was a very inter interesting one to discuss and I was very happy that I, as a white American woman, was able to discuss this with someone from the Caribbean and then, we, you know, we both talked about different own voices reviews that we had seen and shared that. So I would highly recommend if you're not a person from the Caribbean that you, uh, you know, ask one of your friends from the Caribbean or go seek out own voices reviews or, or something like that um, because this is a very a difficult topic that Candace Cardi Williams is handling. Uh, besides that whole conversation that's been happening, so I think this book is definitely, um, you know, this is her debut and I think there's definitely a lot of growth available for there. If I were to give the book uh, a star rating, I would give it three stars because it was fun and page turnery and it dealt with a lot of difficult topics, but I felt like there was some improvement that the writer could have and I'll definitely be checking out the books that this author writes in the future. Uh, but for me, beyond the fact that it was page turnery, I thought there were some like plot kind of issues of like when things happened and you know some other things that could be discussed and I'll be very interested to see what this author writes um, in the future. And what's also interesting that we talked a lot about about with the book is how there's so much expectations that um, you know much of the book is about Queenie and how her white boyfriend breaks up with her and it looks at a lot of the racism that she faced, but it's really just about her and her life and her just trying to live a life. It doesn't have to be doing this grand thing. I think, you know, there should be representation of books of people just living their everyday lives with everyday issues. And I really appreciated that this was that take on that book. So I'll be very interested to see where this author goes next. And I am very much interested in following the conversation around it. Um, but yeah, this was part of my research for Caribbean Heritage Month. Uh, we actually ended up not not going with Queenie and picking something else for various reasons I don't want to spoil but um still it was very informative to read and I'm glad that I read it but it's you know I don't know I, I feel like when I say three stars I'm like oh yeah that was that was fine that was you know solid fine but I feel like for other people three stars is like a disappointment so to be clear that's a good rating for me so <laughs> The last book I read is also a book that I just enjoyed and it was fun and it was fluffy and it's like this, you know, fun three-star read, which is fine, I guess. I feel like I always have to describe that if I ever do stars. This is why I don't do stars anymore. Um, but that is the Romance Book Club. And uh, this is a book about a man who is a professional baseball player and he lives in Nashville, I believe. and. Uh, his he and his wife are getting a divorce they have separated and they have started having talks about divorce but he wants to he wants to be with his wife he loves his wife he wants to save his relationship so a friend refers him to this bromance book club which is a book club of really powerful men in nashville they are professional sports players and nightclub owners and all this stuff and so he joins this book club where men read romance novels to learn how to better relate to women and to be better husbands, boyfriends, whatever. Um, and so he kind of goes through this kind of boot camp to try to save his marriage. And so I found this really interesting. I, you know, whenever I get really stressed is when I want to read something like a middle grade fantasy or romance novel and I really like certain different takes on romance novels. So I really enjoyed listening to this one. If you're looking for something fun and fluffy and kind of escapist, then I would say pick up this one. Uh, I've also read the next one which in May, so um, I'm enjoying the series so far and I know there's a third one coming out in October. As of right now, it could change. But yeah, so definitely go check those out. It's a fun series. It does, it, you know, it's exactly what I wanted it to be. I don't think it's going to win the Booker Prize, but it is, it is fun. It's definitely fun to read. And I enjoy seeing, you know, obviously the author loves romance novels, but she kind of makes fun of them in certain ways, but then also like in the end legitimize like this is a valuable genre that we should be reading kind of deal. So I really appreciate that. It's just fun. So basically the second half of my April reading was reading fun books and the mirror. <laughs> To the mirror, the, the to the mirror in the light, whatever it is. Anyway, so I will talk about that next time in my next wrap up. But until then, um, yeah, I'll talk to you later, guys.